this is another edition of the podcast where Kai and I are going to be discussing what is Christian eschatology. Please right now subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Instagram, and this and all of our other videos will be linked in the description for audio platforms. So, um, uh, Becca and I, not too long ago, we did a video on what is a pre-trib rapture and how it causes us to live. And there were a couple people commenting and questioning what we believe, and that's okay because healthy conversations can come from that amongst theological circles. But in this video, we're actually going to describe what eschatology is because pre-trib rapture falls under Christ Christian eschatology. So in this video, Kai and I are just going to describe what is eschatology. And so eschatology is the study of what the Bible says is going to happen in the end times. And so many people, um, when getting involved in theology, tend to want to avoid eschatology because they think, well, maybe this doesn't really matter for me. Uh, something I was reading in one article was some people call themselves pan-millennialists. They're just saying, oh, however it pans out is how it pans out. But as followers of Christ, we're called to search all of the scriptures. So we should want to know what the Bible says about eschatology because whatever stance we take on eschatology is going to change the way we live. As pre-trib, we should be constantly awaiting and purifying our lives for the return of Christ. As mid and post-trib, we should be embracing to go through tribulation. So it's going to change the way our eschatology beliefs are going to change the way we live our lives. And so, if you have anything to add? Yeah, it's just, uh, personally, as pre-trib, um, it's a purifying doctrine um, mm -hmm. to like realize that Christ could come at any time and that completely changes the way we live. We don't want to come back and be the evil servant um, just sinning and beating our brothers and um, caught in sin, but we want to be mm -hmm. focusing on Christ's return. And if we truly believe that He can come back at any time and we're dwelling in that, um, then we, we won't, that's when we don't sin, is when we're thinking that Christ can't come back at any time. We want to please Him mm -hmm. as a faithful servant, yeah. Yeah. And so, although there are these different views on eschatology and what is to come, they don't have to divide us as Christians. A lot of times you see lots of division, and that's, that's the devil winning battles whenever we begin to become divided over, oh, you're pre-trib, I'm mid-trib, I don't want to talk to that person. It seems to look more like a political debate rather than two people as Christians <laughs> discussing something. And that sat in the Christian circle. But, so, um, one thing we can say is what, even though pre trib and mid trib believe different things about the end in terms of salvation, we both believe in the same thing. And what brings us together is far stronger than what divides us over something as small as what is to come. And so, we've said that in a couple episodes regarding hostility towards other people but whenever we are debating people that hold to different theological beliefs about the end times what is holding us together in Christ is far far stronger than what is causing us to argue we we should recognize that and move on and debate in a civil manner that produces um, a purifying doctrine because what what is um comforting about this in 1 John 3.3, 3, like Kai said, whenever we set our minds on this, it's a purifying doctrine. All of these doctrines are purifying because at the end of the day, they're all bringing glory to Christ. And so there is a great deal of controversy regarding these issues. Whenever the more and more you get into theology, you're going to run into people that hold to different beliefs than you. And so we've talked about Acts 17 before where it calls us to be Bereans. But what's interesting is, um, in that verse, it says that the people in, Th um, in the church of Th Thessalonica, whenever they received the word, they didn't only search the scriptures, but they received it first, and then searched the scriptures. So whenever people tell us their views, we should receive what they have to tell us, and then test it with the scriptures. And Kai and I both, and many other, and many other people, I've taken in views of what people have to say about mid-trib, post-trib, and then we test the scriptures, and whenever we do that, we still believe 
and are convicted personally of a pre-tribulation rapture. Now that doesn't mean that we hold any resentment towards other people with different beliefs, but we can civilly discuss these with other people and still bring glory to Christ, if you have. Yeah, and it's not something that completely divides people. There's people that go to um, the same churches which um, split views on this area, yeah. but it's something you can have a civil debate and talk with. This actually kind of strengthens your view once you um, receive um, arguments against opposing your view, and then you get to go and search it out, yeah. receive it, and then search it, it kind of builds your um, stance a little better. Yeah. And so, now, if you're wondering, whenever we say end times, here are some questions that are raised regarding eschatology. What is the rapture? Some people don't even believe in the rapture to begin with, but what we believe the rapture is is when Christ will gather his church in the clouds. Uh, what is the rapture? When, when another question raised in eschatology is when is the rapture going to occur in relation to the tribulation? Whenever Kai and I say pre-trib, mid-trib, and post-trib, when we say pre-trib, we believe that Christ is going to catch us up into the clouds before the seven years of tribulation prophesied in Daniel 9. Mid-trib believes halfway through. There's, many, there's a pre-wrath view. And then there's post-trib, and all of these are raised. These are all questions raised within eschatology. Another question raised is, when is the second coming of Christ? Why is it important for Jesus to return in the first place? When is Christ going to return? Signs of Christ's return. Is the millennium literal or figurative? Is another question raised. These are all questions raised regarding eschatology that we read about in biblical prophecy. And that's a lot of things. One third of the Bible is prophecy. So that's a large portion of scripture that we're disregarding if we say we don't want to get into eschatology. We're leaving out a third of the Bible. And so um, we dug in a little bit, Beck and I, into what, why we believe in a pre trip. And there's much, much more lines of reasoning. And we are going to go deeper into that. But right now, we just wanted to break down what is Christian eschatology and why. We should not, uh, why there should not be walls that divide us over these things. Why it should still look like church and not like a war zone mm -hmm. whenever we debate these things. So, do um, you have anything else to add? No, I don't. I just um, yeah. encourage you guys to you know, find what, study and find what you guys believe um, personally. Um, don't let anyone tell you what to believe, but um, go find it on your own. Just receive what other people have to say, maybe what we're saying, and go um, search it out for yourselves. And find your view. Yeah, because a lot of times whenever you enter into a church or a congregation, whatever that end times view is being taught is what people believe. And a lot of times when people study the scriptures themselves and come to a different view, sometimes they become very hostile towards the view that they were once taught. And that's, I, I've seen that in a lot of different churches and that's sad because it shouldn't divide us as Christians because at the end of the day, we're all going to be in the same place one day with Christ. And it's not going to matter pre-trib, mid-trib, or post-trib. It's going to matter that we put our faith in Christ to save us from our sins. And so, yeah, as, as Kai said, don't just listen to what other people are saying. Actually go and search the scriptures and see of own personal convictions what you think the scriptures make most sense. So yeah, that concludes another episode of the Modcast where Kai and I discussed what Christian eschatology is. So please, once again, sub to our channel, follow us on Instagram, and this, with all of our other videos, will be on audio platforms linked in the description. Have a blessed week. Peace.